All right, welcome to part two. So let's move on. Basically, we have here a brushless motor. Um, this is also known as an AC brushless, brushless motor or synchronous motor. Um, right here, we have permanent magnet, a synchronous motor right here. And let me show you this. We have two different types here. So AC induction asynchronous is right here. This is an AC induction asynchronous motor. And then right here again, we have the AC permanent magnet synchronous motor. The permanent magnet's inside this rotor, and then outside here is a stator winding. Okay. And it's synchronous because uh, it, the, the rotating the speed of this rotor, the RPM of this, matches exactly the rotating magnetic field in the stator. Okay, they lock, they're locked together. Uh, you'll see in a video. On the asynchronous, the rotating the rotor right here, as it rotates through, it's going to be at a different speed than the stator RPM, the magnetic field through the stator. The stator physically is stationary on both of these, but the magnetic field is rotating through it. Okay. So that's the difference. These ones are locked up, same speed, uh, hence the name synchronous. These ones are different speeds. The rotor is always going to be a bit behind the stator rotation, uh, hence the asynchronous. Show you the video here. That's just what I just told you. And then there's permanent. There's that the rotor north and the south. So as this magnetic field rotates through the stator winding, this is the stator winding right here. If I had this one charge coil A, I'd have north up here, south down here, north right here, south down here. They're all locked up. And as I phase this one out, I phase in F, and this rotor is going to rotate with it at the same speed. So that's synchronous. <clears throat> And there's another picture of that as it rotates around. So here's that DC motor operation. You can find DC motors in many portable home appliances, automobiles, and types of industrial equipment. In this video, we will logically understand the operation and construction of a commercial DC motor. Let's first start with the simplest DC motor possible. It looks like this. The stator provides a constant magnetic field, and the armature, which is the rotating part, is a simple coil. The armature is connected to a DC power source through a pair of commutator rings. When the current flows through the coil, an electromagnetic force is induced on it according to the Lorentz law, so the coil will start to rotate. You will notice that as the coil rotates, the commutator rings connect with the power source of opposite polarity. As a result, on the left side of the coil, the electricity will always flow away, and on the right side, electricity will always flow toward. This ensures that the torque action is also in the same direction throughout the motion, so the coil will continue rotating. But, if you observe the torque action on the coil closely, you will notice that when the coil is nearly perpendicular to the magnetic flux, the torque action nears zero. As a result, there will be irregular motion of the rotor if you run such a DC motor. Here is the trick to overcoming this problem. Add one more loop to the rotor with a separate commutator pair for it. In this arrangement, when the first loop is in the vertical position, the second loop will be connected to the power source. So a motive force is always present in the system. Moreover, the more such loops, the smoother will be the motor rotation. In a practical motor, the armature loops are fitted inside slots of highly permeable steel layers. This will enhance magnetic flux interaction. Spring-loaded commutator brushes help to maintain contact with the power source. A permanent magnet stator pole is used only for very small DC motors. Most often, an electromagnet is used. The field coil of the electromagnet is powered from the same DC source. The field coils can be connected to the rotor windings in two different ways. Parallel 
or series. The result is two different kinds of DC motor construction, a shunt and a series motor. The series wound motor has good starting torque, but its speed drops drastically with the load. The shunt motor has a low starting torque, but it is able to run almost at a constant speed, irrespective of the load acting on the motor. Unlike the other electrical machines, DC motors exhibit a unique characteristic, the production of back EMF. A rotating loop in magnetic field will produce an EMF according to the principle of electromagnetic induction. The case of rotating armature loops is also the same. An internal EMF will be induced that opposes the applied input voltage. I'm going to pause that for a second. Basically what they're saying is as you power this commutator and this armature right here as it goes through this rotor, when you send current through here, it's going to create little magnetic fields inside this wire that interact with these, these yellow lines of flux out here. That's what causes this to turn, right? That's a motor. That's what we're talking about. Now, forget the fact that I'm powering it. Think about what this is. When the motor starts turning, this copper is just a chunk of copper turning in a magnetic field. That's a generator. So it's actually inducing current in the copper as it's turning. That's what back EMF is, electromotive force. So it's pushing back at these brushes. That's what limits the current on electric motor. So when you start up a DC motor, like this represents you know, a power seat or power window motor, sunroof motor, Current's goes, current is really high, so startup current is super high. Once it gets up to operating speed, that back EMF is significant enough that it limits the current. So I know that's really advanced. Um, if you get it, great. If you don't, email me, call, ask, look it up. And there's a ton of videos on it, and I'm going to put a, a few PDF documents on here as well. So that's basically your DC operation. Let's take a look at an asynchronous AC induction motor. Induction motors are the most commonly used electrical machines. They are cheaper, rugged, and easier to maintain compared to other alternatives. In this video, we will learn the working of a three-phase squirrel cage induction motor. It has two main parts, stator and rotor. Stator is a stationary part, and rotor is the rotating part. Stator is made by stacking thin slotted, highly permeable steel laminations inside a steel or cast iron frame. Winding passes through slots of stator. When a three phase AC current passes through it, something very interesting happens. It produces a rotating magnetic field. To understand this phenomenon much better, consider a simplified three phase winding with just three coils. A wire carrying current produces magnetic field around it. Now, for this special arrangement, magnetic field produced by three-phase AC current will be as shown at a particular instant. With variation in AC current, magnetic field takes a different orientation as shown. From these three positions, it's clear that it's like a magnetic field of uniform strength rotating. The speed of rotation of a magnetic field is known as synchronous speed. Assume you're putting a closed conductor inside it. Since the magnetic field is fluctuating, an EMF will be induced in the loop according to Faraday's law. The EMF will produce a current through the loop. So, the situation has become like a current carrying loop is situated in a magnetic field. This will produce magnetic force in loop, according to Lorentz law. So, the loop will start rotating. A similar phenomenon happens inside an induction motor also. Here, instead of a simple loop, something very similar to a squirrel cage is used. Three-phase AC current passing through stator winding produces a rotating magnetic field. So, as in the previous case, current will be induced in bars of squirrel cage, which is shortened by end ring, 
and will start rotating. That's why it's called an induction motor. Electricity is inducted in the rotor by magnetic induction rather than direct electric connection. And that's it. I know that seems really complicated, but although it looks different, this is how asynchronous induction motors work on like Teslas and some Mercedes Smart for Two, etc. So if they have an induction asynchronous motor, it works on the same principles. You're not powering the rotor, you're rotating a magnetic field in the stator, which induces current in the rotor, which creates a magnetic field that interacts with the rotating magnetic field in the stator. I know that's a lot, but uh, pause it, repeat it, absorb it, and make sure you understand it for moving on. Um, next up is your synchronous motor. So here's how a synchronous three-phase AC motor works. This is like 90-some percent of all electric cars out there, hybrids. You know, the Honda IMA, the Prius, the electric vehicle Focus, they have a permanent magnet uh, rotor that's going to be locked up synchronous with that rotating magnetic field in the stator. So this is much more common. As the name suggests, synchronous motors are capable of running at constant speed irrespective of the load acting on them. They are machined with high efficiency and are mainly used in high precision applications. The constant speed characteristic is achieved by interaction between a constant and rotating magnetic field. Rotor of synchronous motor produces constant magnetic field and stator produces revolving magnetic field. The field coil of stator is excited by a three-phase AC supply. This will produce a revolving magnetic field which rotates at synchronous speed. Rotor is excited by a DC power supply, so it acts like a permanent magnet. Alternatively, rotor can also be made of permanent magnets. Just like our cars. Interaction of rotor and RMF is interesting. Assume you are giving an initial rotation to the rotor with same direction of RMF. You can see that opposite poles of RMF and rotor will attract each other and they will get locked magnetically. This means that rotor will rotate the same speed of RMF or rotor will rotate at synchronous speed. Synchronous speed can easily be derived as follows. This means that if one has got control over frequency of the electricity, speed of synchronous motor can be very accurately controlled. But if the rotor has got no initial rotation, situation is quite different. North pole of the rotor will obviously get attracted by south pole of RMF and will start to move in the same direction. But since the rotor has got some inertia, this starting speed will be very low. By this time, south pole of RMF will be replaced by a north pole. So it will give repulsive force. As a net effect, rotor won't be able to start, or synchronous motors are not inherently self-starting. To make synchronous motors self-start, a squirrel cage arrangement is cleverly fitted through pole tips. At the starting, rotor field coils are not energized. Again, remember ours is a permanent magnet rotor, and we don't use this uh, type of configuration. We use a, a position sensor, so the computer knows where the polarity of the magnetic fields is, are uh, of the rotor, like in a clock position, you know, 360 degree position. So with revolving magnetic field, electricity is induced in squirrel cage bars, and rotor starts rotating just like an induction motor. Again, ours is a little bit different. What's going to happen is uh, once a computer knows the location of the rotor, where the north and the south are, it'll energize the stator winding, this one that's rotating, to lock up in a synchronous fashion. Anyway, that's about does it for part two. Stay tuned for part three.